Welcome to the Whiskey Balls. I'm Daniel. Uh, Rex, we got whiskey. What do we got? Uh, we have a single barrel of MGP rye. Remember the Krogman's dudes in Indiana who t buy basically bought um, a bottle of every, a barrel of every single thing that MGP pr produces? Okay. And then they came up with no, characters for each of them? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, just whiskey, though. Yeah. Because they also do like yeah, yeah, yeah. gin and stuff. All the whiskeys. Like, just the whiskey. So, yeah. like the corn, the yep. all the different mash bills. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so this is the rye, mm -hmm. but it's a single barrel okay. rye um, finished in Taxman Tax Holiday beer barrels. Taxman Tax Holiday beer yeah. barrels. I don't know that beer. Yeah, me either. I'd like to know that beer. Would you? Yeah. Does it smell good on this? Yeah. Oh, hey, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're definitely comparing that, Krog that rye. Yeah. H-I-J-K. At least on the nose, whatever that... Uh, beer barrel finish was doing, at least on the nose, it works with rye. I like it. All right, here's the barrel proof rye. Yeah. Single barrel straight rye. Is it the same one? It is the same one, good. Because this is not their um, high rye, mm -hmm. MGP high rye that right. everyone knows. Yep, yep, yep. This is 51 rye, 49 barley. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, um, the beer one, I'm going to start with the beer one, then we're going to go back and reference the original. This, by the way, is from Rob Frederick, Magnificent Bastard. Rob Frederick, you magnificent bastard. I'm out of step, man. It's been a bit. I've yeah, been, yeah. I've been mickeying it up. Yeah, how was the Disney world? I haven't seen you since you got back. Can I say, yeah. like, when we're done? Yeah. You're gonna have to sit. Are you doing a slideshow? No, no. <laughs> it's gonna be close though. Okay. I'm gonna tell you the most amazing ride experience that I've ever had. Okay. Because I still am not over it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Was it a Star Wars? Ride? Yeah. Oh, I've so I've heard. Okay, well tell me. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I'd be that guy, but it turns out I'm that well, guy. I, I've heard some of the rides are amazing, and I keep hearing about the Star Wars ride. I'm oh, assuming yeah. it's the same one, but we'll yeah. we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So it is ride, but it's got this like candied cinnamon uh, peppermint note yeah. to it. And also the barley, yeah. It's creamy. Yeah, barley and rye works. At it, least in the nose, at least in the nose. It smells like a Christmas Starbucks dessert latte. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Christmas like where it's like Starbucks creamy. Starbucks dessert latte. Yeah, it's like a, okay. it's a creamy note, like a latte, but it's yeah. definitely like there, a peppermint there, spice. Or, there's like a, you know, some honey on that, kind of a flaky pastry. Mm -hmm. Maybe some almonds, slivered almonds on top. I totally just dusted my nose with whiskey. <laughs> it's being out of practice. I am totally. I can't even <laughs> swish anymore. <laughs> Swirl. Oh, that's good. That's good. Oh, there's an apple on that taste. There's also a uh, hard candy coffee note. Near the finish? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. And then it gets kind of creamy, almost a vanilla. Kind of like a charred edges of a vanilla. Yeah, I, um, I like that. My printout yeah. left off half the things that I was looking for. Okay. Now, we have not poured this one yet. No, but we're gonna. Okay. Yeah, Text that's nice. Man. I, so everybody is familiar with the high rye mash bill. I like the barley and the rye playing nicely with each other. Uh, and then of course we got the 45% corn. What is the barley? Oh, that explains it. What is the barley percentage on the high rye? Is it also? No, it's like one. Okay. One percent. Yeah, it's the difference between one and four. So their tax holiday beer mm -hmm. is a Belgian style dark ale with buckwheat honey. Oh. Right? It's a yeah. chocolate rye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Christmas ale with a spicy base. Uh -huh. Buckwheat honey gives molasses and cherry notes. So that's what's adding all of that depth and honey and richness yeah. to that MGP rye. It works, but we need to compare. That, that. might be the best MGP gotta, rye that I've ever tasted. Compare, though. Well, the finishing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious to see. Because this is the first whiskey of the day. At least yeah. for me. The yeah, me too. Okay. Oh, I've been drinking since eight. I'm just okay. talking about. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Yeah, definitely different on the nose. Oh yeah, this is way more classic. Yeah, uh, bright, fresh. That eucalyptus and uh -huh. like herbal tea. It's almost more of a green apple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then, oh, yeah, dark more, malt. More heavy, hefty, weighty. Thick. It is kind of beery, like beer it esque. And you I said the proof is super comparable, generic, but yeah. Okay. Uh, this one is fifty-eight point three. Yeah, they're both cast. And so. that one's fifty-five. Okay. All right, yeah, this is just more green, fresh. 
I love the density and the richness of this one. I do. I kind of... Man. I'm hoping... You know, MGP should really just release their own stuff because they make... Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why they were just the supplier for a lot of other people for, for so... so long. <laughs> Again, I'm not mad at it. Like I would no, do no, the, that's the right call. In their position, I would do the same thing. And as, as, like, even inconvenient, as, a as inconvenient for not only you know us personally, mm -hmm. but the industry at large. Uh, no, nobody should have ever gotten as dependent on a single player as mm -hmm. the industry allowed themselves to get with MGP. But yeah. it was the right call. It was. Oh man, so much better. Yeah. I, I don't dislike this one, the classic rye. Mm -hmm. It's it's fine. It's, it's not my preferred rye. These are brighter, almost, it's almost citrusy. Mm -hmm. Almost, like a little bit of a, of a citrus pith peel. But this is everything I love about the Monongahela Northeast yeah. rye. It does round it out richness. with a bit more heft and mm -hmm. body and thickness. And yeah, yeah, just a little, it feels more dark. This feels like, uh, it's a little bit of a, words, a little bit higher on the brighter end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, these crisp flavors. This still has crispness. But it's also more well-rounded, more balanced on the other end of the spectrum too. It feels like a more comprehensive I dig it. palette. Yeah, I like that. I like I like what these guys are doing in general. The yeah. Krogman's guys. Sure. I love the labeling. I love what they the, the full disclosure. I love the approach. I love yeah. the just owning it. And then you go back to the nose on this, and you get a little bit like a strawberry fruit roll-up on the nose. I can see what you mean by that. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a waxy fake fruit. Mm -hmm. Chord 642, how to find whiskeys I think I'll like. So I walk into a liquor store, I head to the whiskey section, and have no idea what to do next. I know about the basic types of whiskey, I just don't know how to look at a bottle and make an educated guess about whether or not I will like it. Do mm -hmm. you all have any tips? The I bottle's don't. not going to be much help. No, uh, so I thought about that because yeah. When I walk in, I also sometimes, like if I'm on vacation yeah. and I'm getting a bottle, we're out somewhere, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm just gonna bring a whiskey back. I end up buying what I know. But yeah. if I wanna explore, I also sort of just like look around, but I have a lot to call from in my head on right. what I think that might be or what I think the impact of it might be. Mm -hmm. Still, I'm wrong on a regular basis yeah. by getting a, a unbranded single malt that I don't know and mm -hmm. thinking it's probably fine and then being disappointed right. or getting a budget blend that I was like, eh, and then going, this is really good. Right. I don't know what I would recommend. Right. So in this direction, there's a few different things you can do. One, there's star ratings, yeah. but one person's From five. website? Exactly. And one person's five yeah. is another person's two. And if your palate, if you're just doing like collective star ratings, your palate, you better hope it's going to be right in the middle of the mainstream popular yeah. flavors. If you like something off the beaten path, that's not gonna be very helpful to you. Um, there's like flavor cloud stuff that we've been toying around with, but yeah. there's only so many whiskeys that enough people have experienced yeah. that they can even weigh in on, which is right. frustrating because like once you get past the big brands. It's like, like, well, you got like three people who have an opinion. Yeah. And you don't know if you like what they like at all unless you follow yeah, them yeah, for yeah. long enough. Honestly, I think uh, getting in with uh, some type of local whiskey enthusiast group, you guys are sharing collections and bottles and pours. And those people will know your palate, yeah. right? So you can be like, hey, do you think I'd like this? And they can be like, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, you wouldn't like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's uh, short of that. It's like, man. That's rough. Yeah. So it's a good problem to have, though. Mm hmm. I mean, you buy a bottle and you roll the dice, and sometimes you fall in love, and sometimes. You know what? That doesn't. It makes even, a good gift. It makes a good, <laughs> makes a good e Even if you don't like it, yeah. then it's an opportunity to you know blend some stuff with it and explore. Yep. Yeah. And I, I regularly take those bottles to house parties yeah. and, and leave the whole bottle. Look how generous I am. Yeah, here's a whole bottle of whiskey that I guarantee you people in here will like, but right. I don't. Prefer it. Stimulated guinea pig. Okay. So I recently, oh, this is off tasting whiskey. Mm. I recently bought a bottle of Yellow Spot and it tastes super weird. Mm. Kind of tastes like cork and is super sour. I know how a Yellow Spot is supposed to taste and I'm sure that's not how. Mm -hmm. So he's already familiar with the palate. Evidently. Yeah. Has anyone, anyone ever had a similar experience? Absolutely. And does that happen or just. Uh, did I have very bad luck? No. Um, it's it not common. Yeah, it's rare. But I've absolutely had it at least three times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but again, the, the rarity of that. Very Considering rare. the number of bottles that we have gone through. Where it happens way more often is at a bar. Yes. Where you order something and it turns out they left an open pour spout on it. Like, okay, so on my trip, yeah. I got 
to first night in, I went down to the bar to get a drink to take up to the room. Huh? And they had Glen Kinchy, Lowland single malt, mm. and it was totally unopened. Wow. And he was like, oh, no one ever orders this one. I was like, well, that's the one I want. Yeah. So he poured me some. Uh, we got busy, so that was like a Monday. Wednesday, I was like, I'm gonna go get another Glen Kinchy. I went down there. They left it open. Still had the pour spout, and it was up on the shelf. Right. Of a scotch that right. he said no one ever orders. Yeah. And I tried, I only ordered that for the rest of the week. By Friday, it tasted different. Yeah. So they have those, the pour spouts, that little metal tube, mm -hmm. right? They, pour, they have the little rubber sleeves. Even those don't seal. We know we had them at the distillery, and I, I, I started telling our people, no, no, no. You cap them at the you end of every night. Because even the sleeves aren't tight even enough? Even the sleeves aren't tight enough. Yeah, that's frustrating. Yeah, I don't, we don't use pour spouts unless they're on things that we're moving through quickly. So I guess if you're at a bar, just a random bar, get bottles that you know people are burning through. Yeah, because it's more likely that it's a newer bottle. That's like sucks. Jameson or, you that know. That sucks. Yeah. Unless it has a cork on it and then you can roll the dice. Yeah, but anyways. Yeah. anyways. A lot, of, a lot of hard problems we have to deal with in our lives. These are very, very difficult, challenging problems. Yeah, slightly yeah. off expensive scotch. <laughs> Here's dividing, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me and fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your liver's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us.